Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so in this mini supplemental video, what we're going to be talking about is how to compute the discrete Fourier transform matrix. Okay, so we should know by now that in practice, usually we're gonna want to use the fast Fourier transform uh, command in MATLAB, but in case you're interested in how to actually compute the discrete Fourier transform matrix, uh, I thought this would be a nice little bit of code. So let's go check out the computer. So here we have um, a copy of the lecture notes, and this is essentially the matrix that we're trying to compute. So this uh, matrix here will give us the discrete Fourier transform. So the idea is you take in data at some points, zero through n minus one, you multiply it by this, fat, this discrete Fourier transform matrix, and you get your frequency coefficients out. Okay, and so this omega n is kind of the fundamental sampling frequency. Okay, so let's go see if we can code this up uh, in MATLAB. So I'm just gonna clear all, close all. And I wanna compute this um, for a vector of input data that's length 500. Okay, so my big N is going to be 500. Uh, I'm just gonna create an X which is ones of 500 by one. And I'm gonna take the FFT, Y equals FFT of x. So this is how we would normally, uh, we would normally use the fast Fourier transform. But today we're going to do the discrete Fourier transform and actually compute, um, compute this matrix. So W equals um, e to the minus i times 2 pi divided by big N. So that's this W here, is this fundamental frequency. And then we're going to create a matrix of one, 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 one omega, omega squared, dot, 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 one omega squared, omega fourth, dot, 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 and so on. We're gonna compute this matrix, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna show you two ways of doing this. So the slow and steady version is gonna use four loops. So I'm gonna say four i equals one to n, four j equals one to n. I'm going to say my DFT matrix at i and j is equal to my w, my fundamental frequency, to the i minus one times j minus one power. Okay, so you can go back to this formula and you can convince yourself that this matrix here, the i jth element of that matrix is w to the i minus one times j minus one. Okay, so just check that out yourself. Then we say end, end, and this matrix DFT uh, should give me the exact same answer as my FFT. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, create a plot figure. The first thing I'm going to plot is, um, okay, so my MATLAB crashes whenever I try to do a fast Fourier transform. Let's run this one more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the answer that FFT gives me, right? That's gonna give me a bunch of numbers, like 500. And I'm also going to plot what I get when I take my data times my DFT matrix, okay? And hopefully they're exactly the same thing. <coughs> okay, let's go back uh, to my code. Okay, I'll just do my slow and steady version. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot uh, the real part of Y. So these are complex numbers. I'm just gonna plot the real part. I'm gonna plot that in um, black dashed lines or maybe red dash, red solid line, oh, black line, okay. Hold on, and then I'm gonna plot the real part of my DFT matrix times X. So DFT times X should be exactly the same as what my FFT gives me. And I'm gonna plot this in red dashes. Okay, so I'm gonna run the first part, then the second part. And we see for the coefficients that matter, they're very, very similar, okay? So what I wanna do now is I actually want to plot um, this DFT matrix. So this is kind of a cool 
way of plotting this matrix, um, this big discrete Fourier transform matrix. If I plot the real part of all of the coefficients, notice that there's some pretty neat patterns here. If I make it bigger, uh, you can see kind of all of these neat patterns. But there's an interesting effect. When I start to change the size here, notice that the number of cells actually starts to change. This is just because of aliasing effects on the screen. I hope you can see this in the online version. But notice as I change the, the size of this, the number of rolls here actually becomes uh, more and more and more. That's just an aliasing effect, um, but it looks really cool. So this is the discrete Fourier transform matrix. We can visualize it like this. Um, there is a faster way of computing this. I'll say the really fast way to compute. Instead of using a for loop, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to con compute this uh, mesh grid. So instead of for i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n, I'm going to compute a 2D grid of all of my i, j locations. So that's i, j equals mesh grid from 1 to n, 1 to n. Okay, so these are now both two-dimensional objects. They're arrays. And I'm going to say my DFT matrix equals W dot, ti dot to the power big I minus 1 dot times big J minus 1. Okay, so each of these big I and big J matrices have, you know, all of my IJ locations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take for every single uh, element in that array, I'm going to multiply that I minus 1 times that J minus 1. And I'm going to take W to that power, and I'm going to populate this two-dimensional array. And so when we do this in MATLAB using these dot to the power and dot times, this uses really, really fast uh, vectorized operations, and it's much faster than for loops. Okay? And if I just uh, compute this thing, I should be able to uh, get the exact same image. Okay? So this is the exact same image uh, as if I used the for loop. Okay, so that's, that's it. Um, we're able to compute exactly this discrete Fourier transform matrix. We've shown that it gives us exactly the same answer as the fast Fourier transform. And we've also shown that if I used vectorized operations like dot to the power and dot times on these mesh grid elements, then it's much faster to compute. Okay, so that's all for now. Thank you.